It's day four. It's time for some arrangement. Um, also, I'm going to be giving you guys some tips on how to clean up your sessions, how to manage your files, etc. Because as you start making a lot of songs, you start to accumulate a lot of garbage on your hard drives, a lot of issues, and it's like taking the trash out every day. You gotta, you gotta clean up your workspace. So I'm going to show you a bunch of cool stuff, guys. Um, yeah, today we're going to focus on arrangement. I'm really going to just try to show you guys some really great tips that I've learned over time, just arranging a lot of music. Um, I've arranged thousands of pieces of music now. So I feel I feel like I'm at a point in my career where I can actually talk about arrangement in a, in a pretty good way um, that hopefully is helpful to you. So I'm gonna just kind of be sprinkling in some very basic stuff, some like kind of intermediate stuff, beginner to intermediate, some in intermediate to advanced stuff, and then some really advanced stuff that may go just right over your head. That's okay. Uh, what you gotta understand is the more you hear about this and the more you see it and the more it's talked about and the more I show you, um, just that repetition is gonna start to develop that sense for you. So just keep showing up. Keep showing up to all the challenges. Keep watching the uh, the song creation formula. I'm going to be coming out with the 2.0, which will be really fun. I'm excited about that. Um, and yeah, just, just keep soaking it in because a lot of this stuff may seem kind of weird to you right now. And it might be like, I don't, I'm not there yet. Uh, that's fine. You don't need to be there with a lot of this stuff. Um, but you know, in a month's time, six months time, you might be like, oh shit, I went back on that and I got so much more out of it because now I understand those principles. And obviously a major tip for you guys is to, uh, go through the master classes, get involved on the radium Academy, um, start going through those mixes and those mastering things that I'm doing. Uh, you'll learn a lot. You'll get a lot of vocabulary out of it as well so that we can speak the same language because vocabulary is a big thing that, um, I realize helped me grow as a musician quite a bit, as a producer a lot bit, and as an engineer like miles, okay? So once you start getting the vocabulary together, you start to realize, oh shit, this all is really making sense now and I'm learning a lot more. So study the vocabulary, ask questions about what that means. Like if you're like, yo, what does that mean? What's a pre-chorus? What are you talking about when you're, you know, the, the middle eight, you know, what, what are you saying here? Um, it's okay to stop me. All right. Um, so let's get into uh, some basic stuff right up front, which is going to be kind of clearing up and cleaning your session up because a lot of you guys are just going, 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 right. And you're, um, you're making messes. <laughs> That's what we do. It's like when you're making food in the kitchen, when you're a chef and I've worked in kitchens, um, in the kitchen, you're always constantly cleaning up after yourselves. You you have to put the knives back in the places where, you know, they got the magnetic strips. You pop the knives like in their places. So you always like instinctually are grabbing at things, wiping things, you know, like you have to get into that mode if you want to be a producer, if you want to be a composer, a songwriter. Modern day songwriting takes a lot of understanding the tools and being able to clean and edit and move stuff on the fly. And yeah, you're, you're constantly just making messes, but, but you're able to clean them up and like be quick and efficient and effective. Uh, everything needs its place for that. Okay. So I'm going to show you a couple things here. Um, the big thing is, is that when you get into logic, it's messy, right? Like you start throwing tracks together. You have audio tracks, you have uh, MIDI tracks, you got samples you're pulling in, you know, like you have just this random vocal thing here and you have this thing here where it's muted and you know what I mean? There's all sorts of crazy shit going on. Um, so the first thing I like to do when I get to a point where I'm like, okay, I'm going to start arranging this, these pieces. Um, I like to hit B and B is going to open up your audio bin. F is going to open up your files. Okay. So F files B for bin. Okay. So if I hit the bin, it's going to show me all the audio files within the folder uh, or within the project. The first thing I like to do when I get to the arrangement phase. Now, obviously I'm going to be adding more tracks. I'm going to be adding harmonies and vocals and all that stuff. And that's okay. But right now there's a lot of stuff that's maybe in here that I'm not even using. Right. So what we do is we go to audio file here and we're going, or sorry, edit. And you're going to go to select unused, which is shift U. And that's going to select all the audio files and clips that are not used in the session. And then you can literally go in here and just say clear or delete. Just delete those files because none of them are being used here. Okay. 
now you have just the audio files that are being used within your within your session which not only speeds up your computer because it doesn't buffer for those things it doesn't keep them in what we call cache c a c h e not the cache that you spend um but it kind of clears all that stuff and it shows you like where you're at right uh, kind of helps the computer offload some stuff get rid of some stuff other thing I would really highly recommend you do is every day you start a new session um, you know like I'm going to start writing or arranging on this session right now I'm going to go to file save as and I'm going to call this day four okay and I'm just going to label it whatever it is like day four and then today's date which is going to be the 14th and I'm just going to hit save and then I'm going to go back to my finder and I always create a Z uh, old folder, okay? And the Z old folder has all my old sessions um, within it. So I could take day three and I could just pull that into the Z old folder. So always within my folder um, that I'm working from, I put it up here on my favorites. Like if I'm working on Heather Taylor's stuff, right? Um, or Josh's stuff or Scott Ro Ross, you know? Um, if I'm working on Song Creation Challenge day one, which this should be called just Song Creation Challenge August, right? Uh, but if I go in here, I can automatically see the last place I left off and the most recent session. A lot of people have this going on where they just have all these sessions within their folder like this and they're like, ah, oh, which one's dated? What is going on? Like, don't, don't get caught in that trap. Like, just get very efficient and effective with your stuff. And I do that with everything. So, for example, if I'm mixing... I might have like, you know, Brandon Luis, right? And I go into like, I called the king and this is the session here. I would go in here and I would go, okay, I'm gonna make a Z old folder, which is already in here. And I'll take all the stuff that is uh, older, right? So this is June this of 2020. This is July 9th of 2022. And these are in August, right? So the latest session I'll keep in there and I'll pull all these to Z old. And then even on the outside folder, if I go here and I have other folders here um, under Brandon, right? I can make a Z old folder right here as well. And the reason I put Z in front of it is because it always will stay at the bottom. Okay, so I could go in here and I could put anything like that's older. So like these are stems. Uh, this is, you know, if I had like different session folders that were older, I just pop them in there. Okay, so that's a, that's just you know, something to help you kind of organize your shit a little bit because it will get really crazy. Same thing. I'm going into bounces, right? If I go to bounces, I could also have a Z old folder in here and I could put day one in here because that's old, right? And then I'd have like my day two. And then once I finish today, I make a bounce. And I do highly recommend that after every day you work on something, you make a bounce. Uh, even like make a bounce of the full reference file of where you left off. Like say I left off here, right? I just take this and I'm going to make a bounce, right? And I'm going to say, hey, this was day, um, I believe this was day three, right? So I'll go here and I won't I won't label that with the date. I'll just say day three, okay? And I'll make a bounce of that where I left off, okay? That's really good because then you can also kind of like jump back to where you were and go, oh, what was I doing with it like yesterday? Or what, what did I really like about those vocals when I was working on it three days ago? You can always check or you could bring them into the session and you can A, B the reference because sometimes you might get away from something that was really cool and you don't want that. You want some, you want to stay stay with the cool shit, I guess, if that makes sense. Uh, so I got day three, August uh, AIF, but then also I might do like mute the vocals here and just bounce this as well and make, a, um, make an instrumental. Okay, so just put instrumental. Right. And then now I have an instrumental version uh, and I have the bounce version. So I can just like if I'm on my phone, like maybe I'm on a walk or something, I can listen to the instrumental and kind of like come up with a lyric idea or something. Or I'm in a different zone. I can be writing with it or thinking about arrangement stuff uh, when I'm not right in front of the computer. Because sometimes when you're right in front of the computer, you don't get good ideas. You know, you're just like kind of stuck and you're like. You're so technical. You're trying to get the computer to work, right? Like in my case, you're trying to get Ecamm uh, software to work with Logic and not stutter and all that shit. Um, so yeah, just make sure you're always kind of saving, making versions, making bounces, etc. Because now like, for example, I can go, okay, this was day three. Uh, this was yesterday, right? 
and this is where we're at right now. So I'm just gonna pull that in and I can pop it at the top or you know at the bottom or whatever. And I could always just like listen to this. And I always have a reference of where it was and where I'm going, right? So just mute it at the top, leave it alone. Um, you could even hide it if you want to. But it's just a, a quick way to reference something. I do it all the time in mixing and I started doing it a lot more in production and composition because I was finding myself like losing these great ideas and going like, oh, I had that great idea and then having to go open up sessions. Like that that's just such a waste. So, um, and then you, if you do want to import uh, stuff from an earlier session, you just hit F for your files again and you can go into um, that spot. Like for example, you could go to the project file and you can bring in, I think I actually put this on my desktop. Um, you can bring in an old one, like go in Z old and you can go to day two and you can say, oh, I really like the base patch I had there, right? And you could select that base patch with the content and the, you know, the plugins and everything. And you can add that to the session where you go, bam. And now I got that base patch that I liked that I was writing, right? Instead of having to go open up another session and do all that shit. So just some uh, basic stuff for you guys, but also stuff that I think is like really useful. Like this is stuff that, you know, I constantly am like, oh shit, I need to, you know, rethink that or whatever. Um, and I, that's why a lot of the times I mute stuff and I don't delete it yet. Like for example, I might still grab something from this loop. Um, so it's not deleted. It's just in the session muted. And then later um, down the road, when I'm like in the mix phase, I can go shift D or shift M, I'm sorry. And that'll select all my muted regions. And then I can just delete my muted regions and clear it out. And now I have everything that I'm actually using. Um, I'm gonna undo that though. Okay, so there, there's a couple little tips and tricks for you guys, okay? Okay, so now with arrangement, let's talk about arrangement because we talked a little bit about it on the last live and I think we got somewhere with it, right? Like, um, let's see where we left off here with this and uh, we'll, we'll mess around with some stuff. You left a party hours ago I caught a glimpse of your flooded eyes I know exactly where you go When you don't want them to see you cry Walk out like nothing's wrong yeah, we know you're so headstrong But this party is lame and your friends are like statues So, so lame Red lights, red lights, red lights And I pull these red lights And like the light of our lights never change Awesome. So first thing I want to do is not sit here and nitpick everything because it's very, very easy to get caught up in nitpicking. Uh, what I mean by nitpicking is like, I could easily be like, oh, I need to double that harmony. I need to harmonize that vocal and do like, I'm not even at that point where I should even be writing uh, much, many lyrics or, or vocal melodies right now. Um, I mean, I can, I can write the whole song, you know, and then uh, arrange around that. But uh, what I want to do is I, I, I kind of use those snippets and those ideas to start to develop uh, the story and kind of the arrangement of how I would want it. But I like to move really fast with arrangement. Um, and then I like to just kind of move things around and, oh, maybe this needs a little, this needs a break, that needs a pause, this needs more of a pre-chorus, et cetera. Um, but yeah, get it mapped out so that you have a roadmap and then you can go into the sections and you can like really, you know, get into the nitty gritty of those. Now, of course, if, if you did the sound design and you did uh, make your loops really cool, then you already have all the pieces you need to really arrange out something. And I already have my intro piece. I have this piece, which is kind of a, to me, it's kind of a verse. Verse slash, yeah, like post-chorus kind of thing. Um, this part here. You left the pop. Because it's like this like indie rock kind of thing, which I love. I think it's really dope. Yeah, like now what I'm going to do is I want to just take all these pieces that I've already built um, with with the time I've spent on the sound design and stuff there and just range them out. Like get it 
get it out quick. You know what I mean? And then go and like finesse and finagle and, and all that stuff. Uh, the best way I was taught about arrangement, you know, and the best way I think about it now, because I'm always working on deadlines, I don't have like unlimited time on everything. And I'm just, you know, I'm a hobbyist and I just mess around with music on the weekends, you know, um, which, you know, I, I kind of miss that. I think that's pretty dope. I wish I could do that again. Uh, but I'm always on a deadline. So I have to think like what's done, right? What's finished uh, that I can turn in. Uh, finished and turned in is like, it has to be a certain length. It has to have a certain amount of uh, pieces and parts, etc. cetera. Um, but that doesn't mean that it has to have all the layers that I imagine it to have. So if you sit here and what I mean by this is if you sit here and I design, for example, this, um, this pre-chorus going into this first verse and I spend like hours and hours and hours and hours and hours on it, then what are people going to get? They're going to get 12 minutes of something and then it's going to be everything. Oh, I didn't get to any of that other stuff. And I think that's a really, really dumb way to arrange. So... The way that I arrange is I put it all out and then I do pass and then I do another pass and then I do another pass because if I can keep passing it through, then I can keep uh, making it better and better and better all the way across. And anytime I finish a pass, like from beginning to end, I now have something I can bounce and I have a finish, finished uh, product or something to show, right? I have something to show somebody. Like, for example, if you're going to do a, a you're going to get your song reviewed or you want to present it, you can't be like, oh, here's our uh, here's our verse. OK. Um, OK. So you got 12 seconds of a something like you didn't even get me to a chorus and people are like this is lame. Like, what the hell do you want me to give you feedback on? So you have to have the full thing done. Uh, OK, so I'm going to show you how that works and what I mean by that. So first off, I just like right away go to my markers. I do not use this arrangement thing because uh, that's just not it's not made for what I'm trying to show you. This arrangement thing is really made for the drummer track. OK, so I'm going to go to my marker. Um, I can get rid of this tempo. I don't need to see the tempo. I just want to see the markers right now. And I want to hit like a, this. I want to say intro, right? Um, and then I can say like right away, this goes into verse two or verse one, right? Verse one. And then I go into, yeah, verse, verse one, uh, A and B, like, cause this is kind of the B section of verse one. Um, and then maybe this is kind of a pre-chorus as well, but let's, uh, let's listen and check it out. You left the party. Awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat this kind of like chorus A and then I'm going to write like a B part to the chorus as well, where it's like maybe a little more repetitive or it's like um, sound designy sort of thing. So what I'm going to call this is verse one, right? So verse one, uh, we can say verse one A because it's like an A part and then a B part, right? So this will be um, verse you cry, walk. verse one B, right? Uh, go bam. All right, and then we go into like chorus 1A. Like there's no pre-chorus. I don't really need a pre-chorus, I don't think. I'm going to treat the chorus kind of like a chorus A section and B section, I believe. That's that's kind of where my head and my um, where I'm thinking. Okay, so we'll go like chorus, chorus 1, 1A. And then maybe like through the middle of the Red lights, red lights, red lights. Okay, so I like the first chorus being short like that. Uh, maybe um, the second chorus has a little more length to it, but um, and it's more tagged. But I like I think of this right here as a uh, like a post chorus. Now again, like my arrangement could change completely and dramatically, but I want to get through the first pass. That's what I'm doing right now, right? So this is going to be um, a chorus. Uh, I guess we call this like a post chorus. Okay, and this will just be like, you know what I mean? Just something like that, like where it just pauses for a second. Uh, meaning, I will extend this out a little bit and grab all that stuff here and go like that. 
and grab this guy as well. I don't know why this is detached. I think it's because I did like a hit or something. Yeah. Come. All right. So this could be like a post chorus here, right? So go like that. Post chorus meaning like just a little refrain. Uh, we're not going to be going right into the verse. Never change. So I think that needs to be twice the length, right? So do 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 Like just something very very basic, just hangs on that note. Um, so we'll take that and we will just duplicate this again. Like um, I'm not trying to do anything here fancy. I'm just trying to lay out the um, the arrangement. Okay, so I'm going to hit equals on these, and this is just going to marry these regions. So I have them all as one, right? Just equals, simple little thing. Uh, this is just going to hang on this one note um, for now. And it's just going to be a little post-chorus kind of thing before we come into the verse. Okay, and that right there, that sound is really cool because it kind of throws us back to kind of uh, verse one intro kind of vibe right but it's a refrain so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to delete this um and let's actually use this guy here and go like that and maybe that works really nicely right so um so we'll keep that say okay delete that and maybe this bass goes off we're going to split that guy so it's just asking if I want to keep the note um, that's overlapping my edit or do I want to split the note? So I'm splitting the note. Okay, so that's like a little refrain and then we can go back into this kind of um, drum and bass EDM kind of vibe that's like modern uh, synth pop to me. That's what it sounds like to me. Um, that's the genre I'm going for in the style. Okay, so another thing, you guys should definitely know what genre and style you're going for, like heavy. You should not be, uh, oh, I don't know, this is kind of, uh, you know, it's orchestral, hip-hop meets like, uh, you know, classic rock meets like, uh, no, no, like you need to pick a genre. Uh, a genre is very important. It helps everybody. So now we're going to like have this like little, you know, break part. Um, and then you'd imagine that the, the second verse would be a little different. That's going to come into production. That's going to be different stuff I do with the production. Um, but let's grab this guy as well. Again, I'm just arranging this out. I'm not trying to uh, make anything really different or really unique or go and like write new lyrics. Nothing like that. Y'all got to stay focused on the task at hand. And that's what this is for. This is to help you kind of like stay, um, you know, stay focused. All right. Um, overlap is cool to have on if you want to do edits like that, right? Um, I keep that on as I'm arranging. And then sometimes I have no overlap on when I'm down to like the precise moments of flying things and, and getting into like uh, super arrangement kind of stuff. Okay, so right now, let's see. Now we're at uh, like post-chorus here, right? Um, where did my guy go? There he is. We can get rid of the signature as well. I don't need any of this stuff besides the markers. All right, cool. So post-chorus, and then that's going to go into um, verse 2. All right. And then I'm just going to play this just so I can get a feel for it and understand. You left the party hours ago. I caught a glimpse of your flooded eyes. I know exactly. Okay, so I can easily get caught up in that area and be like, oh, I need to do this and I need to do that and I need to do all this sound design stuff, right? Um, don't do that. Just keep arranging your shit um, because I hear the deficiencies. I hear the problems. Now we're going into verse two here.
Okay, really, really simple, simple stuff, right? So now I have that part. That's my verse two, and it's a good, what do we got? Like 12 bars, 16 bars, right? Perfect. Um, verse two, good, post chorus in there. Now uh, let's take this and let's duplicate it because that's gonna be our chorus, right? Bam, I'm going into our chorus. This stuff can go, maybe I get rid of that guy. Um, and then we're gonna double the length of the chorus just so we have it. Now, of course, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna change stuff. I might add chords, I might add different melodies, I might do something completely different on the chorus. But for now, I'm just arranging it out. So I have to keep repeating myself because you know you're like, oh, you should do this, and like your brain automatically wants to pull you into doing something, right? Like, oh, I gotta do something different there. I gotta change this. I gotta change that. And you're like, no, stop. Like just arrange the shit out. Like make it make it the length you need it to be, right? Okay, so verse two, and then this is gonna be chorus two. A, and then we're gonna call this like a chorus uh two B right here. And we're gonna do something different there because I, I just feel like the arrangement is gonna need that. Okay, two B part. And then from there, we're at what, a minute and uh, 23 seconds. So this is great because this is gonna be like a fast, punchy, um, fun song. Um, so right now I want to throw, I'm thinking like a bridge, but it could totally be like an instrumental kind of bridge, right? With some like oohs and ahs or like, you know, uh, anything. It doesn't matter. I don't know what it's gonna be yet and that's fine. Okay, so let's go into um, just grab a placeholder. And a great placeholder is just pulling from what you've already made, right? So right here, I've already made this part. So I'm going to grab this part. And this is kind of like what I have as like my intro. Um, I'm just gonna pull it over as a placeholder, okay? I do this all the time in, uh, in arrangement. You know what, I've actually done in very, very normal um, when you're in writing sessions, you literally just loop the chord progression for three minutes. Like, and the artist or the singer, the top liner, will write the whole song on top of that. Just a four chord progression that stays the same. So you guys understand, like, we're already miles ahead by having some sound design and and having, like, you know, these different textures and different parts and uh, drums and, like, effects. And, you know, you, you spent time on your loop, so you've sound designed something. Like, you're miles ahead of even what most people write to in the studio. Okay? I'm telling you right now. Like, writing sessions... Typically, I could throw up drums and bass, and I just take this part right here and loop it out for three minutes, and then just have a top liner just write all the stuff, and then we arrange all the parts on the top lining on the top line, and then we go in and we produce around those parts, right? But I like to do it this way because this, for me, is much more um, it's much more engaging, and it keeps me more inspired to write. You know, like I'm like, oh, I want to write stuff on this. So, uh, so that's all cool. I think the bridge could be twice as long, but let's hear it. Um, going from verse two to chorus um, two. Okay, so this is where I go, okay, is that gonna, is that interesting? Is that gonna be cool? Uh, probably change this completely. Uh, just as far as like this, do, 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 do. I wanna break from that. I really want to to break from that. But, because um, now it feels really fast, like that, that bridge feels really fast. But maybe if these notes aren't in quarter notes, maybe it's gonna feel a lot slower, right? Like, or, or in uh, eighth notes, maybe it would feel a lot slower. So I'm just going to drag this down I just made a copy of that, and I'm gonna turn the ARP uh, off. Let's just see if we can do like padded um, bass notes. I kind of like that idea, and then like having a pause at the end where it's like, 
like maybe has like that chop again the the red lights you know but then it's like stacked up and layered with harmonies and stuff different harmonies um so like this whole idea right here um oh yeah and also like why not grab this guy and bring him over here All right i don't know why he's got to be a guy maybe that's let's check out let's grab this girl here and bring her over here all right <laughs> all right so let, let's check that out maybe that's a cool little pause or maybe he goes red lights you know something like that i don't know or maybe this whole guy girl um it can go down here and be this this different drum kit right and then this could go away and this could be also here so we have kind of like that distorted like what we did with the intro and now let's check that out Right? So, and, and even in that part where I'm like, red lights, that can maybe be pitched back up to its original. Red lights. Cool. And then that has like maybe a little. Boom. And that's like, then we go into the chorus again or something, right? Uh, outro chorus. So you see how simple it is to just get the arrangement done. Like it's not, I'm not trying to uh, reinvent the wheel here. Making pop music, guys. Uh, indie pop music, you know, but electro indie pop music, I guess, is the best way to put it. Um, but that is kind of like the whole thing, the whole shebang. And it might, this might actually feel short. It might feel too long, you know, so we might have to extend the bridge, whatever. But we can do all that stuff later, right? So just get the arrangement done so that you have something to arrange, like something to write to, right? So let's grab this. Let's just move it over. And now we got that little area. Let's see what that sounds like with that that extra bar, um, that extra, you know, yeah, bar. Um, might be too long of a pause there, but let's check it out. Just kind of feel it out right now. Yeah, I don't like that. So I, I think I need to move that back where we hit right on the downbeat. So just move that back. And maybe I like this going here. That's great. Okay, so we're like right at like two minutes long, and I already feel like that's plenty for the song. Um, I do feel like we could make the uh, outro just a little bit longer um, because we only hear this chorus, uh, like this chorus 2 uh, A, A, B sort of thing. Um, we're going to do like a chorus A, B rather than it being this thing that I already have where it's doing the red lights, red lights, red lights. We're out through these red lights. Like it may not be that, and and I'm I'm sure that it won't end up that. So just because I don't I don't like that writing enough to be I'm not married to it. So considering that this first chorus is literally very fast, uh, at 172 and an eight bar length, which really feels like a four bar length because it's at 172. Um, I think we can do this chorus twice as long at the end as well. And maybe just have like an outro sort of thing. So 
this could be and this will be sound design heavy we'll have different textures there'll be chords on it there'll be like you know vocal melodies vocal harmony stacks doubles all that stuff to keep this interesting towards the end and then now we're at what two minutes and 20 you know two minutes 25 with a hit out right that feels more like an arrangement to me so uh, that's it so now just to have placeholders for my stuff and since i've already kind of popped these parts together um, i can literally take the verses the choruses all that stuff and just move them over right so like i can have that there i can have a chorus here i'm just going to move it over here to chorus uh, 2a and this way i have kind of a roadmap of what i'm doing um, this part can also just be like uh, extended. So chorus 2B, uh, I'll just move this over, right? Like I'll just kind of duplicate that and just have that there for now. Just to kind of like, it's going to it's gonna give me ideas. Um, and then that's cool. And then this chorus out is going to be, um, you know, bada bam. And then just duplicate that, which is uh, command R is going to be repeat. And just make sure that all lines up. I just love these MIDI errors. I, I I don't know where they're coming from, man. Like I, I honestly, <clears throat> so frustrating. Anyway, um, let's try just flipping back and forth universal audio to the Ecamm. I feel like that is probably the issue is this just Ecamm driver is not syncing with it. It's like, I don't know what to do. It's probably a combination. It's probably logic and the Ecamm driver not working together. Because I haven't tried this in Pro Tools yet, which means that it w could work perfectly in Pro Tools. Um, I just don't know. So let's see. Let's flip this back. And... Um, so now I have like a foundation and you see how fast that is like that that typically takes me like 15 minutes, right? Like bam, 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 bam. Okay, it's gonna be this, this, this. Make a decision. It's like anything in life. If you want to be successful at something, you have to make a decision to do it. And that's kind of the first step, right? Oh, I'm going to start a YouTube channel. Okay, cool. Go make a YouTube channel. Shoot a video. Put it up. Publish it. Promote it, right? Oh, man, it didn't do very well. Yeah, obviously. I get it, right? So you got, okay, how do I do it better? Oh, well, I realized in my last video, you know, I need to do this. And maybe the coloring needs to be better. Okay, so improve, you know. Improve with every song. Don't sit here and try to make this the very best song that you've ever done in your life. Remember, you got deadlines for a reason, right? Um, so I'm just trying to get this to a stage where I can actually write to it. I can actually get inspired by it. And I can, you know, go in on it and actually, you know, dig in. So let's play the whole arrangement. Make sure it feels good. You left the party hours ago. I caught a glimpse of your flooded eyes I know exactly where you go When you don't want them to see you cry Walk out like nothing's wrong Yeah, we know you're so headstrong But this party is lame and your friends are like statues So, so lame Red lights, red lights, red lights I threw these red lights
right, so yeah, obviously, like that all needs to change. Like that can't just be me repeating that shit. That's gonna drive everybody nuts, um, including myself mainly. Uh, so there you go. So now you got this like outro. I even thought like, okay, what if you took that loop and brought that guy back? What if that loop actually played in here um, instead of this like you know stuff from the intro? Like, what if we had this guy come back in? But he's like all distorted and. So cool, this is where I can actually go in and I can start uh, messing with my arrangement, right? Like, so now that I have it very much just blocked out, like it's very, oh, there you go, there's the arrangement, it's blocked out. I know exactly how long it is, I know the parts, I know where I might wanna change the parts, and when I get into writing melodies and, and lyrics and everything, I'm gonna definitely know where I wanna change parts, right? Like, oh, that's not working, oh, the chorus needs to, you know, change, or, you know, chorus one needs to be twice the length or whatever. But at least I have like a cool roadmap, right? Like the roadmap is here. And for example, like if someone was like, yo, can I uh, can I get on that track, your red lights track, that idea you got? Yeah, for sure, bro. Um, let me just mute everything and send you everything and, you know, jump on verse one or verse two. You get what I'm saying? Like it's right away. Like they're like, oh, I got it. Or you can go, yeah, jump on it, dude. I, I muted everything. Uh, for you so you can jump on verse two. It's wide open, right? And and they can write to it and they can send me back their writing and I can produce around the writing. It's very, very important that you guys have something to show. You can't be like, yeah, I got this idea, bro. And I'm going to arrange it like this. Like just arrange the fucking thing. Like stop talking about it. Stop telling people what you're going to do. Do it and then tell people you did it, right? <laughs> like you don't, like you don't get it if you think this is a game of like, I'm going to tell people what I think and what I think I'm going to do with my song. Just do it to your song and get to work, right? So uh, again, I'm just going to like kind of chunk these out, block out this marker. I'm going to say this is bridge, right? Easy, very, very small, short, punchy bridge. Everything's punchy. That's what I like about this track so far is like I like the fast punchiness about it. And I'm going to make like little parts where like things come in and out. A lot of sound design stuff is going to happen in this for sure. And uh, the reason I don't go in on sound design is because uh, I want to kind of like save that for vocals as well. Because the writing is going to, uh, you know, it's going to show me what I should do with the sound design. Because I like to write and then I like to do sound design and mixing and all that stuff around the, the great writing. Because if you write a good song, then that's like number one. If you add all the extra sauce on it. Uh, but the song sucks. It's like you just put a bunch of sauce on something that's like, it's all right. It's not even that cool. So we'll just say chorus out. Okay, so very, and, and here's the thing. Like I can do a chorus out that's uh, 32 bars long because really this is so fast it feels like 16 bars. Um, so if, you're, if your track is at like 105 BPM, I don't recommend that. I don't recommend you do this big long outro. Like, it's just not even worth it, right? Like people get bored out of their mind. They're going to skip before the end. So this is two, two minutes and 20 seconds. Great length for a modern track at this modern kind of vibe and level. Um, and now I can get into some sound design stuff. And that's what we're going to do next is I'm just going to show you some more sound design stuff and show you guys how you don't have to actually like add counter melodies and add different chords and add different harmonies and add all this stuff. You can actually just add stacks to what you already have. And that, that's what we're going to do next. I'm going to show you some stuff. Um, if you have any questions, ask them right here. Oh, you got one, Brian. <clears throat> uh, do you always make sure you're not clipping or red lighting the master as you're arranging and mixing as you go? How critical is that if you notice your uh, one, one ish DB in the red? Uh, it's, I use my ears, man. Look, here's the thing, Brian. Like, I've been doing this a very long time. Okay. Uh, not to say like I, like a long time equates doing it well, because I know people that have done music for, 30 years that still suck at music 
okay? So, so time is not a factor of being really good at this, okay? But I'm really good at this and I have proof uh, you know, just with like acc accolades and, you know, streams and, and platinum records and all that shit. So what I would say is when you're at a certain point, you just use your ears and you know what you're doing, right? Like this is a 64 bit mixer. Okay. So that's one thing that I want to point out. So if you go into your preferences and your audio, you can see, uh, in the recording, this 24 bit recording as well. So right away, your 24 bit recording is going to give you about 144 dB of headroom, right? It goes it goes way below and down far below what humans can hear, okay? So that dynamic range is huge. It's massive. It's a lot. Uh, which also means that in 24-bit recording, every single one of your plugins is um, at 24 bits depth, okay? So every single plugin being used is at, at 24 bits. But also, you have high-precision 64-bit summing so the mixer itself is at 64 bits that is an extensive amount of headroom it's insane actually uh the uad apollos are like 117 dbu which means you have just like a shit ton of headroom if i hear clipping it i hear crackle or i hear distortion that i don't like i know i'm fucking up right uh one thing i am doing here is i have a limiter on it so i am pushing a lot of limiting but i'm putting a brick wall at 0.3 db okay so right away if i turn that off and i'm hitting some red yeah i should probably make some room but at the end of the day i don't give a fuck because like this is giving me a color it's pushing everything into it um and when i get to the mixing phase i'm more worried about that stuff but absolutely, if you if you guys are hitting red as you're composing, as you're working on stuff, like like let's check this out. I want them to see you cry. Walk out like nothing's wrong. Yeah, we know you're so headstrong. But this party is Okay, so you can see that's going over 1.9 dB. Um, you have to know the difference between peak and RMS. Your drums are always going to peak first. Your kick drum, because it's like super low end uh, and it's it's peak, it's peak information, is always going to go over. It's just the way it works. Uh, if you try to get that to stay under, you're not going to have a modern record. I'm sorry. Like, it's just the way it works. So, yeah, I'm going over. I'm clipping uh, the digital... Uh, realm of Logic Pro 64-bit summing with 24-bit um, dynamic range. It doesn't mean shit. I, I don't hear it. Why, why do I fucking care? Nobody cares. I don't care. Spotify doesn't care. Uh, you guys don't care. You don't hear it, but you're you're seeing it, so you're like, oh, you're clipping. Oh, you're clipping. Nobody cares. doesn't mean anything, okay? So to me, that doesn't mean anything. Uh, to you guys, I think just because, you know, and I'm not saying everyone here just doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. I'm just saying like to be safe for you guys, if you see red while you're producing composing, yeah, take all your faders down. Like 100%, why not? What, is, what does it matter? It's just going to help you in the long run have more headroom so when you get to your final mix and master, you're going to get a way better mix and master out of it. So, so here's my example here. So I have, um, I have some automation on some of this stuff, but it's none of its, uh, none of its volume. Okay. So let's just take out the kick drum and the snare drum because that's, those are the drums and those are where you're going to get all, all your peak. And let's just look at the meters. So, so lame. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so hanging around like negative four dB um, RMS. Okay, that's like your RMS, which I'm getting peaks in there still from because you're getting peaks from the bass, you're getting them from the sound effects that come in and out, the vocals, etc. So anytime you see this kind of stuff, that's a peak. Uh, obviously, the compressor and and what I have on here is probably flattening it pretty well. Um, so I'm gonna say it's about negative four dB uh, RMS. If you want to be safe with your RMS, I would say give yourself some good headroom, you know, like 6 dB or something, right? So uh, once you pop your drums in and everything, you're going to get, you're going to start getting peak, right? You're going to get the peak, uh, which is different than the RMS, 100%. So well, let's just play it with the peak in here. Walk out like nothing's wrong. Yeah, we know you're so headstrong. But this party is lame and your friends are like statues. Okay, 
Okay, so you're going over about 2 dB here, okay? So grab everything. Easy, easy peasy. Go into your mixer. Make sure you also grab your compressor parallel and your whatever this is. I'm not even using that, so I'm not going to grab that. Uh, and then just take it down 4 dB. So you got this at negative 0.4. Uh, just go take that down 2 dB. So negative 2.4, right? And now you're going to hit around zero, right? Which is fine uh, if you don't hear any distortion. Hey, walk out like nothing's wrong. Yeah, we know you're so headstrong. But this party is lame and your friends are like statues. So, so lame. Okay, so your volume and because you guys like really probably need the most help with mixing and mastering, uh, I mean, you need help with everything. You need to get your production right. And that's really part of like getting things loud. Uh, and I'm gonna show you stuff because your loudness is gonna come from perceived loudness. It's not gonna come from you guys slamming limiters on your master bus or slamming parallel compression in. It's gonna come from a bunch of different stuff. Mainly it's gonna come from harmonics and it's gonna come from distortion, okay? Uh, and distortion does not have to be uh, dirty distortion, overdriven, uh, clipping out, you know, lo-fi distortion. No, no, no. That's not what I'm talking about. Let's talk about it. This bass patch right here. This is what I was trying to tell you guys earlier. Like, you can, like, see how many, like, very few channels I have. Like, what do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six uh, tracks of instruments, and then I have vocals. Okay, so... This is what a lot of people want to do. They want to come in here and they go, yeah, that's great. I got my bass line. I got everything. And now I'm going to add uh, a synth. And now I'm going to add my chords. And now I'm going to add a uh, counter melody. And now I'm going to add uh, stacks on my vocals. And now I'm going to add all this stuff, right? Um, nah, the first thing I would do is I would take this bass patch. And I would duplicate it. And I would change uh, the bass sound. And I would bring in the bass and understand what this is bass is doing. It's very round, it's very woolly. So what if I took this bass and I duplicated it and I opened up a different, um, like I'm not using generate now. What if I use like uh, anything else? It doesn't matter. Let's use, um, let's use Arturia and go into like uh, an Oberheim or an OPXA, you know, something like this, right? And we're just like, we're gonna find another bass patch. <clears throat> That's all we're gonna do. So we're going to go in here and we're going to go bass and AC bass almost in sync analog saws. Let's do like a saw. See how that's, that has a different sound to it, right? A different texture to it. Uh, I do not like the delay on that. Holy shit. Why would you delay it? Yeah, that sucks. I hate that. Um, so go in here. Just make sure you don't have any... Let me see here. Where is the effects? Anybody that knows this OPXA, I think there's like a, there's gotta be an effects part, right? There we go. Okay, so we go to effects and let's get rid of the delay. Flanger is kind of cool. Um, no delay. Okay, let's get rid of that. And let's tuck this base under or with it see what we can do.
right, so hopefully you understand like how important that layer is, right? Like it's just completely making that sound come alive. It's it's opening up the sound. It's all of a sudden like it's going like bum, 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 where you think that that bass sounded really cool. You're like, that's a cool sound, man. Yeah, you really spent a lot of time developing that that bass sound. Um, yeah, but then I add this other bass layer on there, and it's like, whoa, that sounds way cooler, right? So, yeah, add different waveforms. Like, that's a sawtooth bass, right? So what if now we added a triangle bass, or we added, like, a, like an analog bass, uh, or a, a acoustic bass? Like, what if you had a... You know, like someone actually playing a bass. What if you actually like layered all these bass parts and they all took up different frequency areas, right? Like for example, this bass patch was more like the low mids, like from the 100 to 300 area. And then like this took up like uh, this area and that area, right? So like this patch right here, um, we have this EQ here and it's doing the same thing. Like, I don't know why for some reason, like this happens when I'm streaming. Where it's like, I don't want to open, dude. <laughs> All right, dude. Sounds good, man. Thanks. Uh, so the other base patch, like this one right here, I have this curve on it. So this base patch too, um, I can do different curves. Now, I don't have to use the EQ post um, this guy. I can actually use this to make this EQ curve that I want, right? Like I don't, I don't necessarily have to be putting EQ afterwards. Um, but I'm just, I'm doing that because that's like what I did with this bass patch. So I could turn this off right here, right? And let's just hear this without that EQ and blend these together. All right, let me fix that real quick. See if we can just swappity doppity. But yeah, it's, it's all about layers. It's all about sometimes, you know, what if we also have like a different bass going um that's going like you'd be so surprised how these different rhythms can work together uh when you start to sound design stuff uh, but everybody wants to go to i'm gonna put chords and harmonies and melodies and counter melodies and like bro your your bass sound sucks like you need to stack that up and make that sound dope before and the drums need to sound super dope before you start like deciding you're going to go add extra shit on top of your shit pile it's like yo i made this pile of crap man i'm gonna go put some more crap on it let me go throw some flies on it like it's, it's not really that cool all right so let, let's just design this i walk out like nothing So I'm really loving that. What I want to do now is I want to uh, just like turn this EQ on and I want to get rid of this boost because I feel like that's already being taken by this bass. Um, and I want to sweep this up just a little bit more. I'll bring that back in and I want to bring this up a little bit more. So it's like not taking any sub area. Okay, let's check it out. filter out like that what i'm doing is i'm trying to listen for the overlapping frequencies between these two bases and i'm trying to get the overlapping frequencies i'm going to get it out of this one and let this one take it uh whichever frequency i like best out of the base parts those are what i'm going to choose like which one sits the best in that range this being a sawtooth i think it sounds really good down here and it sounds really cool up here and then because of how we designed this, we kind of spread it stereo. So we gave it some stereo spread. We got some modulation on here. And then we also have 
Uh, if we want to like overdo this a little more, we could turn the effect on the flanger again. But maybe you want to try like a chorus or something, right? So chorus will kind of spread it a little wider as well. So let's turn that on and see if we can get that bass to be a little bit more wide and this bass to be just a little bit more mono, right? So anything we did in generate, which uh, doesn't look like it's going to open for some reason, um, and we, we want to kind of close that stereo up a little bit and we'll let the edges be kind of like this more high, high mid kind of stuff in here, okay? So check this out. Yeah, we know you're so headstrong But this party is lame and your friends are like statues So, so lame All right, 
just another layer to the base. Like we're not, we're not like doing crazy shit here, right? Like we're just adding little subtleties to the sound and same thing go for the drums. Like you could easily do this with the drums. You can layer the drums. You can layer the snare drums. I got two snare drums here. Um, I could add like something else that's going to just give it a little bit more warmth. Uh, the kick drum can be layered up. You know, there, there's so many layers you can do just even to the bass sound. It's actually like kind of crazy now that I think about like how many possibilities there are. Um, but yeah, you don't want to like just settle with your sounds like, oh yeah, that's good. I got a bass. Now I'm going to go add uh, another piece of shit sound on top of my shitty bass sound, you know? Like that's the whole point. Like just make these things sound really cool together. Um, now for the bass and for the drums... Uh, I love to take all this stuff and put it through its own um, its own bus. So I'll take it and I'll put it through its own drum bus, drum mix bus. So just doing this is going to really like help it uh, open up. So bus 11 is my drum mix bus. I always have it as my drum mix bus. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to say drum mix. And we're going to open up uh, my drum mix preset. Um, and we're going to start to kind of like blend and glue all the drums and the bass together, which I think is really, really important. So we're going to go drum mix bus, and then that's going to go out to our drum mastering bus. And then the drum master bus goes, you guys know, because you've done this before. You've been through these song creation challenges before. Um, but I'm going to go here to my drum master bus. And then this drum master bus is going to go to the uh, master bus. Okay, so drum master and we'll turn that on as well. And then we're just gonna kind of blend that into the mix, right? Very important that you start to shape your sounds and you start to make things sound really cool together. And if you don't, then you're gonna end up getting all the way done with something and you're gonna go, fuck, uh, I, this fell apart. <laughs> you know, like uh, maybe I have a good song here, maybe not. Maybe the lyrics are good, I don't know. Um, so yeah, so that's everything going, even with the basses, they're all going through that and the drums uh let's pop that breakthrough there as well right so all these drums all these sounds um slate drums yeah we got to put those through there as well drum intro effects indie drums indie drums right pop all these together um what is this brooklyn yeah i don't need that brooklyn kit we'll get rid of that uh these guys all these guys here they all need to go to the drum mix bus and now i'm starting to kind of like glue my sounds together do more sound design um, and then, you know, like I need to manipulate these a little bit because I have no idea if these EQ curves are going to work with what I got here, but they should, they should do pretty well. I walk out like nothing's wrong. Yeah, we know you're so headstrong, but this party is lame and your friends are like statues. Oh, lame.
so all of a sudden there's like a lot of glue happening, right? Like they don't sound like, here's this really loud bass part and here's all this like really loud snare and here's all this loud, like bro, like everything can't be loud. Not only that, like you want to make sure that certain elements aren't loud. You want to make sure that certain elements are just like glued into the pocket, right? So that that's really, really important. Uh, did something go weird with the snare? Um, no. It's just got like a little thinner. Uh, that's like kind of part of the compression. Walk out like nothing's wrong. Yeah, we wrong. So there's like there's like two different snares here. This probably you probably want more of this. You know, like that's got more of the body, more of the punch. But yeah, that's a, that's a big part of like bussing everything together. Like for example, now when you hear the vocals, you're kind of like, where, why are the vocals sound so much smaller? Like they're, they're not as like in your face as the drums are now. Right. Because now the drums have a bunch of harmonics to them. Right. So like, that's something that you guys have to understand is when you, when you start bussing and you start like putting harmonics into your mix, the mix starts to sound like it's coming to life and it starts to sound texturized and it starts like the drums now sound a lot more important than the vocals do. Right? Hey, walk out like nothing's wrong. Yeah, we know you're so headstrong. Right? So I don't I don't go like, oh shit, I need to turn the vocals up. That's just not how you do it. So as you're producing vocals and you're starting to mix and you're starting to put things through certain things, uh, you got to know what you're doing, right? So now what I would do is I take these vocals and I bust these vocals to a vocal mix bus, right? And that's super easy. We're going to go bus 15. We're going to bust these to a vocal mix bus, box mix. And I think I probably have like something that I start out with with these as well. Yeah, vocal buses, um, Vox, vocal mix bus one. So typically I use uh, like slate. I use fast compressors on like a um, a vocal mix bus. But this has a couple things. It has a little radiator. It has a FG. Um, this is like SSL basically, and then um, a Pro Q just sweeping out shit. So now we're going to go through the vocal mix bus with the vocals and we're going to give more. That's right. Harmonics. <laughs> so now I'll, can I hear, you know, kids together harmonics. All right. So now let's, let's hear it and let's start to balance the vocals back in. Okay, so now you're hearing the vocals start to stand up again, right? Like they're like, okay, I can get into this. Like they're like, this is dope. I'm into it, right? So I, I'm showing you a bunch of mixed stuff now, right? But um, 
it's important. It's important to your production. It's important to understand how you color things and how you push the envelope and how you get things to sound bigger and push forward and, and just get more dimension. Um, now for me, I hear the bass is like wide and the drums are, are starting to like glue and it's like, whoa, this is starting to sound really cool together. Right. Um, but the vocals feel very mono and like in the middle. So on the vocal mix bus, I'm going to send to a vocal width bus. And that's just going to give me more width in my vocals. So bus two is going to be a, a vocal width. Okay, so vox width. And then we're going to open up like, you know, something to widen out the, the middle of the vocals. Uh, you could do this a lot of different ways, but um, I think I already have, yeah, like I have like vocal thickener. Let's see here. Um, you don't want to just drown this in reverb. Reverb does not help, by the way. Like you guys just that keep throwing reverb on everything. Like you don't get it. <clears throat> reverb is not the answer. <clears throat> Harmonics are the answer. Okay, so let's go background vocals. Uh, let me see. I'm just trying to find something that would be good for this. Um, I thought I had a vocal width bus that I had already made, but I typically do this stuff in Pro Tools, so it's probably not in the... Uh, let's try vocal thickener. I think this is exactly what it is. Yeah. Yeah, this is the vibe. All right, so this is just like a thickener. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to widen out the vocals. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this EQ um, to uh, control the middle. Okay, and I'm actually going to use a Pro Q3 on this just because I'm I, I can work it a lot quicker. Pro Q3. I like Pro Q3 just because I'm used to it and the workflow for it is just undeniable. So I'm going to go up here to like 80 hertz or so. I'm going to duck the middle, right? So like this guy here, we already have the middle. So I'm going to duck that. 1400 is usually about like the sweet spot for the middle of the vocal. That's where you want like... That's the front and center. So I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna put that in the middle. Okay, so mid, mid. that's what I'm, I'm EQing here. In the sides, I wanna throw more 500 into the sides. Thick, thick part of the vocal. I'm gonna throw that into the sides more. Okay, so I'm just gonna say side. You can also, because I have a doubler and a, a stereo image around this, you could just leave this. You don't need to put this into the sides like I'm doing. You could just do it like normal EQ stereo, right? Um, and then cool. And this will just thicken out the vocals as I start to push them um, into this bus. So I'm going to go zero and then I'm going to start pushing it in. You can hear the difference. I walk out like nothing's wrong. Yeah, we know you're so headstrong. But this party is lame and your friends are like statues. Ooh, it's going to sound so good. I'm just trying to show you guys some game here. But uh, yeah, just pay attention to what happens with the vocal. All of a sudden, the vocal is going to like stand up and it's going to get wide and it's going to get more pronounced and it's going to um it's going to take over the track again and it's going to become the most important thing again but you got to realize like that's how you build your mix and you build your track is that you don't turn things up and down like you don't use volume to get there okay uh, if you want loud records you have to use stages of harmonics stages of parallel processing parallel compression paralleling any effects parallel parallel par parallel everything i'm doing is parallel even the compression on it um and i'll show you in a second so this is what it's all about though you want to you want to like bring your drums up to a level and you go fuck the drums and the bass are so dope now okay now uh the vocal's getting kind of eaten okay so bring the vocal back up to that level you know what i'm saying like now you got to bring the vocal up not meaning in volume. You guys got to like stop thinking about volume. Oh, I got to bring the vocal up. You're right. It's like you bring the drums up in volume and then you bring the vocals up. And then you bring the drums up and then, you, and then you're like, why is my mix? And then you clip your master and then you throw a limiter on it. Like it's like, bro, you're not getting it. You're not understanding what the hell's going on. All right. So I'm just pushing from the vocal mix bus. I'm pushing into that stereo bus. Okay. So check this out. I walk out like nothing's wrong. Yeah, we know you're so headstrong But this party is lame and your friends are like statues So, so lame Red lights, red lights, red lights I threw these red lights in like the light of our lights Never change You left the party hours ago I caught a glimpse of your flooded eyes I know exactly 
now there's obviously like conflicting uh, frequencies happening in the bass and in the kick drum and you know like this like this woofy thing that's really um, starting to like take over the drums and the bass and it's starting to like really mount up uh, which is you got to be really careful with that shit right uh, even on your parallel drum compression right like so I have this goal uh, this uh, you know, punch and crunch compressor, right? And I'm like pushing more of the parallel, the kick into that parallel and turning that parallel up that's bringing it back into the mix. Now, check this out. I want to show you guys something really important. Uh, when you're starting to push into parallel processing, um, I'm going to just throw an EQ after at the end of this um, compressor just to show you how much buildup starts to happen down here because it's really important that you start to clean it up. I walk out like nothing's wrong. Yeah, we know you so headstrong But this party is lame and your friends are like statues So, so lame Red lights, red lights, red lights I do these red lights And like the light of our lights never change I walk out like nothing's wrong You left the party hours ago I caught a glimpse When we come back to verse two and you hear that bass by itself again, you're like, oh, it's kind of whack. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Like, all right, let's put let's put that bass stack back in. Like just listen how different, like how weak that and puny that shit sounds now. Like now that you've heard like all this stuff going through all these harmonics and this like beautiful lush like pumping shit happening and the bass like getting you know another layer to it, which you know I think it needs another layer. It needs a third layer on it. You know, like I might even throw the the Moog on there just to give it like more of an analog texture. I might throw Serum on there to give it more of a digital texture. I might throw, you know, whatever on it. I might give it another texture in the mid range, the low mids, you know, but even like this bass patch going through like just the stereo out, like let's listen to this bass patch. I'm going to go through the stereo out and then I'm going to switch this to the, uh, the drum mix bus. Okay. Let's check it out. And this is just one bass.
All right, now let's take that drum loop and the drum patch and let's go through our drum mix bus, okay? Let's take both those guys and just go through all those harmonics, all that, all that good, good distortion. Like massive difference, right? Like all of a sudden it's like, oh, that's sick. That's like a vibe right there, right? But without it, it's like, oh, here's a stock sound. Here's my bass. It's like, this is kind of lame. Uh, same thing here. Like if we just take this drum patch, uh, this bass patch too, and let's bring that up here and let's do the same thing where we turn off the, uh, the arpeggiation of that one and let's layer it in with that same bass so we have the same structure. Right? And then we can automate like a little filter on that part where it's going so you don't like miss that groove because you know sometimes if you just kill that groove, it's like, oh, that, that's kind of startling. It, it makes you kind of startled. Uh, so let's just turn this to touch or latch and let's just write this compression real quick or this, uh, this uh, mod here. Right, very basic, uh, and then you can go into the actual um, automation here. Just go back to read, and then hit A. Go back to your lanes, go to the, uh, the Pro-Q frequency, and then you can just draw it, like if you want to, just take it here and go, okay, I want this to happen every, you know, what, two bars, like that, bam, bam. Bring it up here, and then bring that guy down here. Something like that, right? Doesn't have to be perfect. I don't care about perfect. Cool, right? Uh, same thing. You could like now we're getting into you know actually like messing around with this uh, arrangement a little bit. So you can have this like hit, um, so it has like a punch right there, or it goes zoom, you know, or like a swoop, where it just kind of closes up. Yeah, I like the idea of like constantly bringing that chop back in. Red lights, you know? I think that's like a really cool idea. Uh, and it could change like red, light, red lights, red lights. You know, like you just have like little chomp, chomp, chomp. Uh, but it feels like very effective. <laughs> Change. 
it's just like a fun like red lights like and also it makes me think of the chorus being different where like maybe that's the tag right uh so instead of having these red lights red lights red lights that could be maybe the outro chorus for me uh so like this is maybe like the outro area you know where i'm like starting to sing the tag if that makes sense um red lights red lights red lights So yeah, maybe that's like a background uh, kind of vibe on, on the outro, right? So maybe the chorus uh, changes to be like, you know, something different where I have like maybe this ooh, oohs, ahs kind of vibes uh, with like a little like certain punctuated thing. And then like that post chorus is actually like a tag, you know, red lights, red lights, you know, uh, like ooh, they do this, they do that, uh, ooh, they make you feel like shit and make you feel bad, etc. Uh, you, you, you got the flag, you know, like, um, you know, you see the red flag, but you don't see these red lights, you know, and, it, and it's just like a tag at the end of a chorus rather than it being like red lights, red lights, red lights. Um, uh, yeah, I think that'd be cool. Yeah, like I think that'll be way more interesting, right? Like it could be like, oh, uh, uh oh, down to dance to tell you how, oh, uh, uh oh, down to dance with you now. Red lights, red lights, like the red lights has like feels more like a tag to me, uh, which is cool rather than it being like this repetitive red light, red light, red lights, and then this whole thing at the end could be more of a uh as i duplicate this track this would be more like a you know like a background kind of vocal sort of thing right um so we take that and we just like drown it in reverb yeah just coming up with concepts that's the whole idea all right and we have that kind of like as a background thing
you know, it's like, it's like you got to play with the pieces you've put together and then do the most with the pieces you have right now and then go back and sweep through it. Like it's very like now I have a cool arrangement. Now I just have to like plug the writing. And once I plug the writing, then I can like arrange pieces around that writing. Like mind you, I haven't put any harmonic structure to this at all. Like there's no, there's no chords. There's nothing here. Um, that's holding anything together like and it still sounds really fucking cool. It sounds fun It sounds like exactly the style I'm going for uh, There's just so much more I can do with the track and uh, we're only at 25 tracks, right? Which really like we're only at like 25 24 23 22 Yeah, like 22 tracks, you know what I'm saying? So um, maybe even less if you just like count, didn't count these like little pieces and snippets that I'm like chopping from. Right. Uh, but I, I like this idea. This is starting to feel more like a chorus to me. Um, I don't like the little, like, I, I don't like that, but it feels more like an outro chorus kind of vibe. Um, but I do like this idea of like doing this repetitive, uh, red light stuff. I think this is super dope. And you guys remember, like, there's a, really what this is, is it's like harmonic and melodic math. Um, I don't know who's on the stream right now, but I uh, hope you guys are getting a lot out of this. I'm trying to fix my microphone. Um, this is like melodic math, right? Like, you don't, you don't, in pop music, you don't want to, like, all of a sudden change the melodies and, like, try to do something completely different or make it, like, super random or, you know, like, I'm not trying to go, like, red lights red lights, red lights, and then all of a sudden be like, red lights, red lights, red lights. Like those are all just like harmonies that should be stacked in the background. They shouldn't be like a melodic change, if that makes sense. Like I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to make like a, this is not a symphony orchestra. We're not, we're not like dynamically changing shit like crazy. We want things to be repetitive because by the time you guys are done with this live, you're going to have this shit stuck in your head. That's name of the game right like that's what i want to happen with my music i want people to go fuck i need that <laughs> i'm addicted to that i want that sound again you know and that's kind of like the vibe for me when i make music i want to like play something and go like oh god that song's addictive you know i don't want any of the sounds to like jump out as like really crazy or like oh man that's too much or whatever for me like i like to listen to a song over and over and over again and go like like notice new nuances in the textures and the layers um and that's what like really great production is about it's about layering and texturizing things it's not about like writing a new part uh that's like comp composition like if you're composing a picture yeah you have to have like different parts and they have to you know key changes and modal changes and all that shit but you know we're writing pop here like this is stuff that like you don't really want to be changing too much. You want to be repetitive. You want people to have the hook stuck in their head. You want like I felt like the red lights, red lights, red lights thing is like not repetitive enough. I think it's way more repetitive to uh, do this at the end here. Like I think this is super cool. Now, obviously, like, I'm not just going to do that on the hook. Like, ooh, like, it's just not, that's not very exciting to me. But I do like the idea of the red lights, red lights, red lights. Uh, maybe even chopping those, format shifting them so they're like, red lights, red lights, red lights. You know, like, just, yeah. Like, it, it kind of calls to, like, that, if you ever heard that Kanye um, track, lights 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 like uh, that's the kind of the vibe of what i'm what i'm trying to do like modernize that a little bit make it a little more edm make it a little more drum and bass with like some modern indie electro pop and shit all right peace guys <laughs>